everybody, I'm Tom Basso. Welcome to Week in Review. This is where we go over all the different games we reviewed over the last week. In this case, it's the last two weeks, and tell you what we think of them. So you ready? Let's get started. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. So last week we put out a new board game blender talking about some highlights from 2018. Check that out. And I also took a look at an insert for the LCG line from Go7 Gaming. Short story or short version of that story, I really like it. They are fantastic. As far as game reviews, I reviewed Peppers of the Caribbean. This is a small card game. I rate this a 7 out of 10. I liked it quite a bit. It's got some neat twists on a set collection um, idea. But it doesn't scale up very well. I did not like it as much with five, but I think it's a fantastic two and three player game. I reviewed Gambit Royale. This is a reprint of Ruse and Bruise. I rate this a 7.5 out of 10. They've taken the old game, cleaned it up, added some new cards, and it's still fun, backstabby, sort of citadels kind of game. And I reviewed the expansion to El Dorado, uh, or the quest for El Dorado. Um, uh, this is called Heroes and Hexes, and I rate this a 9 out of 10. I think it is a fantastic expansion. Gives you some fun push-your-luck aspects, more to do, more cards to use in your deck building. The racing aspect is kicked up a notch. Fantastic expansion, Heroes and Hexes. And that's it for me. I will see you next time. Hey folks, welcome back to another Week in Review. Did uh, two reviews and three other videos this week for you. Did uh, one review for a game called Slap It. This is from Renegade Game Studios. And uh, it is basically a speed-based game where you're going to be rolling a couple of dice, looking at the combination of dice, having to decipher which card those dice are telling you to slap, and then be the first person to slap it. There's a couple variations to that, of course, but uh, that's all in the rules. Didn't like it at all. Gave it a 4 out of 10, and that 4 is based completely upon the component quality of the uh, game itself. So the production quality was good. I recognize that, so I gave it a 4 out of 10. Really did not enjoy the game, though. Um, the other one, though, uh, the other review I did was for a game called Radetzky Milano 1848. Uh, this is uh, put out by Postscriptum Games, and uh, this was a this was a very fun cooperative area control type game where you're trying to work against the game and uh, defeat it before it defeats you. Basically, it's based upon the uh, Italian resistance freedom fighters that were uh, battling the Austrian oppressors, and so. Yeah, that was a very fun game. Gave you this one an 8 out of 10, so really enjoyed that. Go check it out. The other videos that I did this week were some top 10 videos. Uh, two of them, though, were the top 11 to 20 games, first of all, of 2018, and then another one of top 10, top 11 through 20 anticipated games of 2019. And then I also did one of a top 10 anticipated expansions for 2019. It's the first one I think I've done of that sort uh, in recent years. So I did enjoy looking that up and sharing those with you. But that's it for me this week. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care now. Okay, so the first and worst review. Getting, getting the rare one. I very rarely get these out. Seventh guest, the board game. Everything about this game is bad, from roll and move, to bad components, to horrifically badly chosen questions. It's so bad, it's funny. Uh, eyeball boxing. <laughs> it's just a take that game. Where you're punching other eyeballs. You're like, you are an eyeball and you're punching other eyeballs and trying to steal their hot dogs. I think the theme might be silly, but not a good game. Uh, then we have Forum Trajanum. This is, there's, Stefan Feld makes a lot of games I enjoy. This is not one of them. Uh, it, it's kind of boring theme-wise, which is fine if the mechanisms are really strong and interesting. And for me, I just found them kind of ho-hum, especially the aspect where you're trying to put guys together in the middle of the city. I didn't really enjoy that. Fortune City is another game I did, was I wish was better than it was. It sounded really good, but in reality, you just take whatever you can on your turn and build your city, and there's not a lot of differentiation between them. Fine Sand is a unique game. I give this a 5.5, but unfortunately, uh, it's like an experiment from Friedman Freeze. Try to get rid of all the cards in your hand. It's kind of interesting, but once you play it off and you find it, you pretty much do the same thing every time. Then games I gave sixes to. Shadow Blocks this is an interesting puzzle-style game from Ultra Pro, but it just doesn't... Uh, it's basically a puzzle, and you're just trying to solve it before other people, and I don't know that it works as well as a game. Sock and Zocken, this is a good one for kids. As they sort socks into different drawers, you run around the house doing it. Ganymede, this is an interesting game, which 
I liked, by the way, there's some comments in the rules uh, for this game. I said I played it incorrectly. I didn't uh, play it incorrectly. I played it right. It just, the game has kind of this engine building aspect, but I feel like the game ends before the engine building really begins. Then Lions and Tigers and Bears. Oh my, a dice rolling game uh, for kids. Uh, that They'll enjoy that. I give a 6.5 to Stellium. This is pull marbles from a bag. Place them on these things. It's a really pretty game. Really pretty game. It's decent. You just pull marbles by feel and then try to make patterns and score them. Another one like that is Tournament of Towers. This one here has some pretty cool looking blocks. But at the end of the day, you are stacking things and trying not to make them fall over. There's some drafting, which sounds interesting, but that's about it. Then I did a whole pile of sevens over the past couple weeks. We have Big Money. This is a silly game where you roll dice, Yahtzee style, and try to get money from different properties. Light game, but a lot of fun. And you have zillions of dollars in it. Haikaido, which is a sequel to Hanshu, as you build the city in front of you, but now there's drafting, makes the game much, much better. Uh, Coin and Court, this is a money bag building game, where you're putting money into a bag, pulling it money out, and then buying cards and building a tableau in front of you. I think the art could have been better, but the gameplay is solid. Chivalry, trying to become the most chivalrous knight. I like the idea of it. You are doing so by moving your uh, knight around a circle and then manipulating dice to get them to the numbers you need. Sleepy Princess Pile Up. This is a kid's game. Uh, it's a reprint, actually, of an older game where you're stacking things, but it's with mattresses, which is pretty fun. Cusco is the reprint of Java. This game, which gives you action points and you have a gazillion combos. It's good. I don't know that it's aged as well, but the new reprint is phenomenal. If you want a very thinky game, though, you'll like it. Uh, Gugong, a uh, Euro game in which you're trading presents and then taking actions to get points in various ways. The trading aspect is the most interesting part of the game, right, as you're trying to trade a gift for a better one. Connect 4 launchers. This game looks idiotic, but it's fun. It's Connect 4, but you're shooting marbles and trying to get them in a row. I like it. Abor Aboritum. This is the new deluxe version of the game, a very thinky card laying, keeping cards in your hand, trying not to let other players get them, playing them. It's a lot more thinky than I had expected from such a pretty game about trees. And then Cosmic Run Regeneration. This is a push your luck style game where you're gonna roll dice and move your dice on different tracks and try to get as far into tracks as you can before planets explode. I was pretty impressed with this one from Dr. Finn Games. And then I gave an eight to The Boldest. This is a fantastic little game in which you are playing different cards, uh, groups of cards, trying to go out to the, to the forest and find machines and parts of machines. The theme is really neat, the art is really neat, and the gameplay is nice and fun and fast. Also over the past couple weeks, I did a couple look backs. I talked about the best-selling games both of December 2018 and the whole year, 2018. And we also did a live uh, play of Western Legends along with his expansion. So lots of stuff. We'll see you next time. If you haven't heard about it, we're running a Kickstarter. It starts today at noon Eastern Standard Time. Until then, I'm Tom Bassel, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.